I watched four different movies in order to make this video about two specific ones. Readers, if you follow me on Twitter, which you should read us underscore 101, then you know how often my tweets and subtweets end up becoming video topics. The video where I first ranted about that horrific Gods of Egypt movie? That was a Twitter thread. My opinions on Red Hood over the Winter Soldier? Me reacting to a tweet by Gail Simone. Basically, when I take into consideration how I initially reacted to the tweet and how others interacted with my opinion, I start to realize something. This can be content. And you'll be happy to know that the latest discourse turned video topic that I stumbled upon was recently provided by an indie music producer that goes by the moniker I Love Brandon, which you should definitely follow him on his socials, his stuff is extremely good. The reason I'm mentioning him is because he proposed a discussion on his Twitter account at the end of November of 2020. Which was the better Christmas movie, Batman Returns or Iron Man 3? You know you don't fucked up, right? No! So, as some of you may know, there's this thing, this concept, known as an unconventional Christmas movie. These are films in multiple genres that usually take place either on or around Christmas, but the plot has very little or nothing to do with the holiday at all. So for everyone who argues that movies like Bad Santa and Gremlins are Christmas movies, don't worry, they are. The ones in question are movies like The Long Kiss Goodnight, Trading Places, and the more action-oriented example, Die Hard, which I'll get back to in a minute. <laughs> Four movies! Now, in this case, both Batman Returns and Iron Man 3 fall under the unconventional Christmas movie category. Both films take place days before Christmas, as can be seen both visually and acknowledged in both of the screenplays. But Christmas as a holiday doesn't really play a heavy factor into either of their plots. But the question wasn't who had the better unconventional Christmas movie between Batman and Iron Man. And because of that, we have to actually take into consideration how much each film felt like a Christmas movie, despite them both feeling the same degree of unconventional. So, even though I'm absolutely going to explain my answer, I'm not even gonna beat around the bush. The answer is Batman Returns. <laughs> but, but, in order for you to understand why I think Batman Returns is more of a Christmas movie than Iron Man 3, I have to explain the reason why Iron Man 3 doesn't work as one. And that's thanks to writer-director Shane Black. Now, I want to start this off by saying that this is in no way me talking shit about Shane regarding this movie. If you want to see me do that, either watch my Film Friday video on The Predator or wait until I eventually cover the Iron Man franchise in a proper movie trilogy. But the thing about why Iron Man 3 only works as an unconventional Christmas movie instead of anything remotely closer to an actual Christmas movie is that Iron Man 3 could have taken place at any time at all. Yes, Christmas was happening during the Extremis event. We see the lights, we see the trees, we see the presents. But considering that Tony Stark was dealing with his anxiety post Avengers 1, along with Aldrich Killian's plans with Extremis, Christmas wasn't really incorporated into the story where it felt like there was any form of a need for the story to take place during the holiday season at all. Take the events of Iron Man 3 out of the week of Christmas and place it in 
oh, I don't know, the week of Halloween or Independence Day. Oh, God, especially Independence Day. And nothing other than that about the movie really changes. And this isn't the only movie written by Shane Black that allows Christmas to just be a forgettable setting that an otherwise interesting plot is happening in. The same can be said of yet another unconventional Christmas movie that he wrote, this time single-handedly, 1987's Lethal Weapon. Just like Iron Man 3, it also took place during Christmas. Lights, tree, season greetings, the whole nine yards. But also like Iron Man 3, the plot of finding and stopping Shadow Company from pushing multiple shipments of heroin into Los Angeles, and the subplot of Roger Murtaugh and Martin Riggs learning how to gel well together as partners, takes so much priority over the course of the film to the point that you damn near forget that Christmas is coming until you see Murtaugh's Christmas tree on screen. Goddamn Christmas! The thing about Shane Black's unconventional Christmas movies is that if you try to look at them as something closer to Christmas movies, they don't really work. And the reason why they don't work in that regard is because that Christmas outside of being a set dressing isn't really incorporated into the story enough to give it the illusion that it is. And the fact that Iron Man 3 and Lethal Weapon have enough of said set dressing for days is hella ironic. <laughs> when he's not trying to relive his old roles and make a non-PC adult version of the Monster Squad, Shane Black focuses on the story of the film first and foremost, adding Christmas as a background element. And because of the story Iron Man 3 told, along with how it could fit anywhere else on the calendar, it makes the Christmas elements of the movie pretty forgettable. Batman Returns, on the other hand, <laughs> is a different story. Batman Returns is both a movie that takes place during Christmas and absorbs enough of the holiday as it is for it to play just as important a role in the movie to make it necessary for it to be set there. The lighting of the Christmas tree ceremony, Penguin's carny henchmen, and the various gear and vehicles they rode reflecting twisted perversions of the holiday that you'd only imagine be something Tim Burton would come up with. The mistletoe scenes with Bruce and Selina. Christmas doesn't have to be there per se, but Batman Returns does such a great job incorporating the holiday and making it an integral part of the plot that it's very hard to disassociate the two or try to imagine it taking place time-wise anywhere else. And, and I cannot believe I am about to say this, as a lot of dads and dude bros would agree, you could say the same thing about Die Hard. <laughs> yes, one could say the same thing about Die Hard as Shane Black's Iron Man 3 and Lethal Weapon, and they wouldn't be wrong. You could definitely take the plot of Die Hard and have the Nakatomi Plaza heist happen during the company's Halloween party, and it stay the same movie. But while it didn't go out of its way as much to make the fact that it happened during Christmas as Batman Returns, there was a pretty successful attempt nonetheless. The office Christmas party, a lot of the dialogue that was used. Even the way the soundtrack used bells and chimes from time to time to remind you that this was all happening on Christmas Eve. There is definitely a reason why people associate Die Hard with Christmas. Now I have a machine gun. Huh, huh, huh. So if I were to choose which one between Batman Returns and Iron Man 3 is more of a traditional Christmas movie rather than an unconventional one, I have to say Batman Returns. I'm not going to say that it's the better movie because I like both Returns and Iron Man 3 for what they are. But considering it's the only one of the two that did the better job making us remember that Christmas was just as prominent as the plot, 
Batman Returns definitely takes the fruitcake here. See, I was going to say that Batman Returns wins the reindeer game, but considering that I've never seen reindeer games, I didn't want to make an ass of myself. But I digress, readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comment section below which superhero movie between the two you think is the most Christmassy, unconventional Christmas movie, Batman Returns or Iron Man 3. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, your favorite unconventional Christmas movie that does a good job at making sure that you remember that it takes place during the holiday. Whichever you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.